Hello everyone, it's Shannon here for Hero Arts. In today's video, we are going to create this colorful watercolor card using the new My Monthly Hero Kit. I'm going to demonstrate how to do some color mixing with the three liquid watercolors that come in the kit. I'm going to start out by stamping our background. I have the cling stamp included in the kit. I am going to use my Misty, but first I need to remove my foam pad and my extra paper to allow for that extra thickness from the cling stamp. I then placed a piece of scrap cardstock inside. I am going to first stamp on this scrap of cardstock to kind of figure out how this image looks so I can better align my watercolor panel, which I'm going to stamp on, on to that stamped image because this is kind of a a specific image I want to get that uh, center in the center of my panel so that's why I'm doing it this way. I have a, a clear piece of acetate here that measures uh, four and a quarter by five and a half so an A2 measurements and I'm just going to trace around it once I get it centered on that image and then I'm going to grab my watercolor panel and place it on top. Now my watercolor panel is not A2. I could have used an A2 panel I just was being a little bit lazy here and didn't trim it down. Now before I stamp I'm going to apply some anti-static powder and then I will ink up my stamp with embossing watermark ink and stamp it. Now that it's stamped, I'm going to dip it in to some white embossing powder. I prefer white, but you can definitely use clear if you have that instead. I just think white is a little bit well, crisper uh, looking than the clear. Now I will heat set this with my heat gun and now we're ready to do our watercoloring. So the kit includes three liquid watercolors. They are pink, dandelion, and indigo. I have this really handy eight weld uh, plastic palette here. It's super handy because there's actually eight little sections on the exterior ring of this image. So I decided to make eight different colors and the little wells in here is going to make that really easy to kind of uh, make these colors and sort, sort it all out. Keep it keep it as straight as I can. I'm starting with the pink, the just the pure pink, the pure dandelion, and then the pure indigo. Now I'm going to start making some of my mixes. I'm going to add a fair amount of red and then a, into one well and then a little bit less into the other because I'm going to kind of make like a coral color then an orange. Now I'm going to go and add my yellow, so I'm adding a lot of yellow to that one that has just a little bit of red, and having adding a little bit of yellow to that one that has a fair amount of red. I guess it's actually pink, it's not red. Now I'm going to add some of my yellow to my other two wells. Now these wells, I'm going to create two different kinds of greens, uh, one that's heavier with the blue, so more of like a blue green, and then one that's a little bit more lime green, so I added a small amount of blue. And then the very last one, I'm adding uh, uh, pink, and the blue with indigo to make a purple. So now that I have all my kind of colors or my liquid watercolors in my wells, it's now time to kind of mix them and make sure I got them right. So I'm mixing first that one that I'm trying to make coral and that one looks good. This one's supposed to be my orange. It's a little bit too um, red, so I'm adding more yellow to it here. I keep going back and forth and looking at it. I'm kind of seeing how it looks on the sides of the, the well because it's a little bit less concentrated there to kind of tell how that looks. Here's my green. Now this one is the one I wanted a little bit more key limey. Uh, so it's a little too green, too Kelly green. So I'm pulling out some of that, that color and I don't want to go away so I'm just kind of putting it aside in one of the other uh, kind of mixing areas on this uh, palette and then adding more yellow to that. So I'm really just eyeballing it here. Of course these liquid watercolors have little eye droplets. Um, but I prefer to just kind of eyeball it. That's my, my preference. So now this is all mixed up. I finished lastly with that purple mixing it and that looked great. So now we're ready to start coloring the first ring of uh, this image, which I'm really excited about. I do have this little eyedropper here to add a little bit of water because I'm right now all these liquid watercolors are like pure concentrated. There's no water really added to them. So I just added a little bit to uh, lighten them up a little bit, make them a little bit more runny. Um, so the more water you add, the lighter they're going to look. And I'm going to start here with this first section and just color it with the pink. This is the pure pink straight out of the bottle with only a little bit of water added to it. So that one's pretty simple. Once I kind of get that water colored in that little section, uh, then I'm going to do a, add a little texture. Now again, we heat emboss this so the the 
the um, image is working kind of like a resist, which is really nice, keeps it nice and neat. Here I am adding the texture, just taking my brush, grabbing some of that water and adding some water droplets into that area and that will add a cool texture. This um, card here is, or this design is totally inspired by a artist that I follow on Instagram. She's incredible. Her name is Josie and she's just an amazing watercolor artist. And I, when I saw this image, I knew I wanted to try kind of what Josie does with her uh, watercoloring and she does these water droplets too. So definitely you should go check her out. Her name is Josie Lewis and her handle is Josie Lewis Art on IG. So she's amazing. You will not regret following her. So I'm just going to continue to work my way around this outer ring, coloring in, coloring in each section with one of those eight colors that I mixed up. Here I am now moving on to that kind of lime, lime green one. I do wish now this was that was a little bit more green. This is my blue green mix. Then I'll move on to the indigo section. Uh, again, that indigo was straight out of the bottle with just, with just a little bit of water added to it. And then I'll finish up my last section, which is that purple that we mixed up with the uh, pink and the uh, indigo. So really pretty colors. These are my eight core colors. All my other colors are going to be mixed from these eight colors, actually combining them to make the other colors. So now I'm going to color this next section in the next ring. Now this section, I'm thinking of it as a mix between the two colors that are nesting beside it or touching it. So the two colors in this section that I'm going to be mixing are going to be the pink and that coral. So what it will really boil down to is a more pinky um, version of the coral uh, that I mixed earlier. And that's because you can see the section I'm painting is kind of between that pink and that coral. So that's kind of how I'm thinking of this is that I'm going to be mixing uh, a new color and the two colors I'm mixing are the ones that are touching that new section. I hope that makes sense. So once I get this color right, I'm going to color it all in, color in that whole section, and then of course add my water spots to get that little bit of texture. Now moving on to my next section, this is a combination of the coral and the orange. And you can see how I'm using my palette. I'm mixing these colors up in kind of the mixing areas, trying to keep those original eight um, in intact, pure, because uh, I'll go back to those often to help me fill out the rest of my little sections of this image. Here I am moving on to uh, mixing the yellow and that that key lime color, so it's going to be a more yellow. This is kind of why you see I wish I made that key lime a little bit more green because I'm, I'm losing contrast between the two, but that's okay. I'm hoping when you guys watch me do this that you will find it a little bit, um, you, you won't find it so intimidating because I admit when I saw Josie doing hers, I was just like, there's no way I can do this. She's an artist, you know, and she knows exactly what she's doing. But I honestly believe if you just sit down and start mixing the colors and just just using your eye, just eyeballing it, you'll be surprised how close you can get. And it's actually really forgiving. I'm surprised how forgiving this was. So please don't be intimidated by this. Give it a try. If you if you don't think you can color mix, I really encourage you just to sit down and try it and, and just give it yourself a hand at it. Um, now I'm moving on to the next ring. Now this is where it does get a little bit more complicated because um, I'm now mixing f colors that f together that I've just mixed. Like uh, So we're like on third mixing now. I'm really truly at this point just eyeballing it. And I think w the important takeaway here is, so this, this should be, this section that I'm painting right now should be a mix of that kind of wine color you see on the left and on the right, that little pinkier coral one that we mixed. Um, so it's, this is just going to be a little bit more like purpley, pinky kind of uh, a red. So much more like a winey kind of color. Um, the key here though, I think, is lightening it up. So 
we want to get lighter as we work our way to the center. We actually only have two more rings to do. So we have this ring that we're working on right now and then the very center ring. And I think it gets a lot easier. Like if you're getting comp, if this is the part where you start to get confused, lighten your colors. That's, that's how you're going to create your contrast because you might not be able to really achieve a lot of contrast because it they're looking pretty similar at this point. If they're looking too similar, add more water to get it a lighter shade and that's going to create the contrast that you need so that, that um, this ring starts standing out and separating from the rest. And I start, to, I learned this, but it takes me a little bit while to figure it out here. I think I start to realize it here at this point, and I'm going, hmm, I'm not getting the contrast that I want, so I start to lighten up a little bit more. And I do wish overall I had lightened up this ring a little bit more than I did. But again, I wanted to show you, like, even though I don't think this is perfect, it's very far from perfect, I'm happy with my end result on this and it was really fun to kind of experiment and see how these colors change when I mix them now here we are we're on that final ring of sections this again I'm kind of eyeballing it here just thinking okay what would be in between those two shades and I'm using what's left over from my mixing palette to kind of also help me get there but really the key here is it's practically there already, right? It's already mixed together in the in my mixing well on my palette. And the key is just adding more water to water it down so it's a lighter shade. That's really what, what you want to focus on for this last ring is a lighter shade, even lighter than the one preceding it. So this is very light. Lots of water is kind of being added here. And in fact, I keep kind of like pulling the color away realizing it's still too dark because I'm not getting enough contrast between the the this section and the ones that came before it but pretty simple because basically using what's left over in the tray from my previous mix before it because it doesn't it's not really going to change that's not going to get that drastically different it's not like we're mixing purple and blue together anymore we're mixing like a, a very yellow green with a very yellow mustard color you know it's pretty similar and I'll just finish it up finish up these last little sections here and I also want to point out while I'm finishing up here that I don't add any water spots to these sections. They're just a little bit too small and you wouldn't notice it anyway, so I don't even bother. So here it is all done. I really like how this turned out and it was really fun to make. Please, please don't let this intimidate you. I really encourage you to give it a try, especially if you've got the kit, you've got the watercolors already, so give it a try. Okay, so now I'm going to take that acetate uh, A2 panel that I have, center it over my image, uh, draw and then trim this down and I did trim this a little bit thinner a little bit narrower than an A2 so I had a slight um, uh, gap on one side for the because I'm going to adhere it now onto an A2 panel of black cardstock this is just to add a little bit um, a, a little design element to this uh, a, to make it a little bit more interesting so it's not just the watercolor uh, background. So now that I have that adhered down to my black panel, I'm now going to adhere it on to an A2 top folding white card base. And once I get that stuck down, it's ready for the sentiment. This sentiment's going to be really simple. This sentiment is from the sentiment stamp set included in the kit, which there's so many great sentiments in this set. I love the way they look too. I'm going to stamp it onto a scrap of black cardstock in embossing watermark ink dip it into some white embossing powder, and then of course heat set with my heat tool. I then went ahead and trimmed it down to a strip and also added some foam adhesive to the backside. Now I'm just going to remove the backing on this foam adhesive, which is giving me some problems. And then I will stick it down in the lower kind of right corner of my card front. And that's actually my card is complete. I'll now hold it to the camera so you can get a good look at all of the color mixing and the water spots. It has so much texture, even though obviously it's basically flat except for the little heat embossing. I really enjoyed this process and I can't tell you how much I loved the finished results. And again, I hope you give it a try and if you do, make sure you share it so we can see it. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.